so we're starting a new series today about the basics of animation in InVision Studio. So first off, I'm creating a screen the size of an iPhone and naming it screen number one. Then we create a background image. And for this, I'm going to use a blue gradient. Once you're done with creating the gradient, you can uh, play around with the angle to make it a little bit more organic. And of course you need to name your layers so you know what's what when there's more of them in the animation. Okay, so the second step is creating a button. I'm creating a standard button and I'm positioning it at 32 points from the sides and from the bottom of the screen. I'm making it a little bit bigger so it's easier to click and a small border radius as well. And then change the color to white and add a drop shadow. The best choice for drop shadows is to pick the color that you already have in the background and then choose a darker shade of it. I pick uh, the values of 8 at 8 and the blur at 16. It's usually best to have uh, the blur double the value of the Y. Okay, I'm making a circle and changing the color to yellow. And then I duplicate the circle and put it at an angle outside. So you have two circles like that. And if you use the Boolean operation of subtract, one of them will simply disappear. So this layer is gonna be called sun and we will name the button layer button. Now I create a drop shadow for the sun, choose the same color as the sun itself, which is yellow and uh, choose the Y value to be zero this time because we want the shadow to go in every direction and create a glow. Uh, and I will pick the blur value at 32 or 64. Now I'm not gonna tell you what fonts to use here because this is only about the animation basic. So pick a font that you like and just write in your city. Uh, pick the right size and the right weight of the font yourself. I'm moving it up a little bit so it's more evenly spaced. Now I duplicate the text, move it under the sun and here is a nice tip for creating the degree sign. You just do it by uh, pressing command shift and 8 or probably on Windows it would be control shift and 8 uh, while in the text field. So we fill in our temperature and our degrees. So I'm gonna use Celsius here, but you can use Fahrenheit if you like. Duplicate our city again and just write sunny. Again, you can adjust the font sizes to your liking and you don't really have to copy mine. Zoom in on the button, duplicate the sunny text again and this time let's write night and let's pick the blue color from the background for the text on the button again. Now move the text into place and make sure it's completely centered on the button both vertically and horizontally. Now duplicate that button layer again, move it a little bit to the side and let's call it day. Now I zoom out and I look for an image of a cloudy sky on a blue background. You can use Google Images or Unsplash for this. I paste the image onto my artboard and set it at opacity 10%. This will make the project look a little bit more realistic, so it's uh, definitely nice to have, but it's not mandatory, you can skip this step. Okay, now let's add some stars to the image, and I simply do it by creating very small white circles uh, of different sizes and place them around our sun. Just as with the button labels, I duplicate uh, the temperature and the weather forecast and move it a little bit to the side and let's change it to clear and have a nightly temperature of 9 degrees. Once I have that I move it a little bit further outside of the screen on the right side. The next step is uh, changing the font color of uh, the button label called the day into something a little bit darker. Okay, let's start the animation magic. Duplicate the first screen and call it screen 2. Now select the background on screen 2 and change the gradient colors on both ends to something darker to represent night better. Yeah, so you probably weren't expecting this, but let's change the sun into a moon now. So open up the layers on the layer palette and select the second circle, the one that disappeared after we did the subtract operation. And now simply move it a little bit to the side and down so you create the shape of a moon. 
So the next step is to just replace the temperatures. So move the one that was in the center to the left and move the one from the right to the center. If they happen to overlap, you can move the one from the left to even further away. And if you move the smaller text a little bit farther than the larger text, it can create a nice parallax effect. So to adjust that, I also moved the one on the first screen. Now decrease the opacity of the text that is not supposed to be on this screen down to zero. On the second screen, let's move night back into the left and day to the center and then do the same thing by decreasing the opacity of uh, the button label that is not necessary to be on that button at the time. So now here comes the fun part. Obviously there are no stars visible during the day, so we need to move them out of sight. So let's pick every star and move it away from the sun, but not all of them in the same direction. You can uh, place some of them outside of the screen and some of them can be still within the screen, but then decrease their opacity to zero. So now let's add some interactions. Select the first button on the screen on the left, click on interactions and set the target to screen two and then set the transition to motion. And for a better effect, you can choose a much longer time for the motion. I'll set it at two seconds, but in normal interfaces, it's probably best if it's uh, very short. And do the exact same thing with the second button, just pointing to the first screen this time. I also changed the shadow on the second button to a much darker one. Okay, so maybe now it's time to test the animation. Press the play button on the top right and then simply push the night and the day button to see how the transition works between those screens. If you want to make it a little bit more interesting, you can also select the background image, the clouds that we had in the background on the second image and move them a little bit to the left. So that will move the background as we transition between the screens as well. Here is how this looks like when we play the animation again. It looks a little bit better, so it's definitely worth to do it, but try not to move the image too far as uh, when the animation gets too fast, it's actually going to be distracting to the users. So keep it subtle and it's going to be nice. So here is the final animation. It's of course very simple, but it's only supposed to show you the basics so you can play around with it yourself. And you can play around by adding different shapes or possibly a couple of different cloud layers in the background and animate them at different speeds it will add to the effect a lot. Now, if you want to add a little bit more to this, you can also add hourly temperatures for both day and night and then animate them independently. So yeah, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, share it on social media and uh, check out the book. Thank you. Bye bye.